Commissioner, thank you very much for joining us just after the conference, which is entitled Fighting Climate Change, a wish list for Cancun. What's on your wish list? Well, if I could wish totally freely, I would hope that we could just get everything done and get the international agreement done. But no parties have really moved, not in Washington, not in Beijing, not in many places. So that is probably not very realistic. So what I hope we can get is an ambitious set of decisions. A decision on forestry, a decision on adaptation, a decision on technology. Of course, the developed countries must deliver on their fast start finance pledges. And then I would also hope that we could agree on how to measure reporting that fire, whatever we agree upon. And then next year in South Africa, maybe if we first have proven that we can agree on substance, then it might be easier to agree on the legal form. Following on from this, a lot of people would say, maybe outside people would say, well, there seems to be a lot of talking, there's not much action, everyone's divided, they're doing their own thing, especially between the developed and developing countries. How are we going to get global action? But they are right. There is a lot of talk, and it's going incredibly slow. And that is a contradiction here. Everybody knows, also after the summer, how important it is that the world gets something done. And yet the political will to compromise is still, as I see it, too weak. So I think the only thing we can is to try to push and push and push, and then Europe can prove by its own example, yes, you can have growth, and at the same time, be a very energy efficient region. It does not have to harm your economy, it's the other way around. It can actually uh, be a gain from your economy. And just talking about Europe as you did, what do you think what the European People's Party is doing in this fight against climate change? I think the EPP is doing very well, for instance, in the European Parliament. I'm working very closely together with some very, very good people. But I think what is very important is also to reach out to, to citizens and tell them. This is not about us going you know, to back to the Stone Ages and not being able to live the good life. If we act now, then we can preserve our way of lifestyle. We can share it with the billions who have not had a share in the, the good things yet. Uh, but uh, we must sort of make that case that this is not a dull and gray life. This is about more intelligent solutions, smarter solutions, more energy efficient solutions, is not unintelligent, it's extremely intelligent, and maybe the citizen will also know that they can actually earn money if they save energy. And just finally, are we on target for 30% reduction by 2020, and should we still commit even if the other major emitters don't follow us? I think in Europe we should take care not to be too complacent. Uh, we had figures recently showing that we, are already, we have already reduced 17.3% compared to 90. That's of course also with the crisis in calculated. So we might not be, in reality, so high compared to where we need to be with the 20%, but it shows we have already done a lot, and we should take care not to be too complacent, because it might be that the Chinese are very slow around the negotiation table, but I tell you, they are not in reality. They are just moving in wind and solar in energy-efficient solutions, and we should take care that we are still the front runners internationally, and therefore we should be ambitious. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much for your time. All the best.